What's up, guys? This is Vinyl like Puma, and today I figured we could do something a little different from what I normally do on this channel and talk about the original Dark Souls. Specifically, I wanted to make a Dark Souls remastered video, giving you guys some tips that I think will help you as you play through the game for your very first time. Now, before we start, this video will contain minimal to no spoilers about the game, so if you want the challenge of trying to figure out everything by yourself, this might be a good video for you. Also, if you're somewhat experienced with the game and you haven't completed your first playthrough yet, you may find that some of the later tips that I provide here are useful to you as well. As always, if you're experienced with the game and you feel that I missed a particular tip that you think is really important, feel free to leave it in the comments section below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and discuss my first tip, and that is that your starting class really doesn't matter. While it may seem like a big deal when you're new to Dark Souls, take it from me when I tell you that the starting class you pick doesn't really matter that much in the long term. Granted, which starting class you pick does determine what your starting equipment, stats, and soul level are, however, it's worth mentioning that you can eventually acquire all of the starting equipment, and with proper stat point allocation, you can turn a knight into a mage, or a mage class into a knight, if you really want to. With this said, if you're still concerned and you want some class recommendations, I'd recommend either the Knight or Warrior if you're looking to play through Dark Souls with more of a melee playstyle, and either the Sorcerer or Pyromancer for a Mage playstyle. You might also like the Thief for reasons I'll get into for our next tip, but generally I'd say either the Knight, Warrior, Sorcerer, Pyromancer, or Thief are all pretty good choices. But again, if you picked something else like the Bandit, Cleric, Hunter, or even the Deprived, don't worry about it as it really doesn't matter that much in the long run. Alright, so our next tip is going to be to pick the Master Key as your starting gift. While picking a starting class really doesn't matter that much, what you pick as a starting gift matters a little bit more, and as a general rule, always, always, always pick the Master Key. Why? Well, without spoiling too much of the game, acquiring the Master Key early like this will allow you to access areas that normally aren't accessed until later in your playthrough. Typically, this item is used to perform a sequence break, which allows more experienced players to acquire more powerful items, spells, and other gear much earlier on than you would otherwise be able to if you didn't have the Master Key. So, if you find yourself frustrated with the game, and you decide to look online for some help, again, it's better to have the Master Key than to not have it. The only reasons I could think of that you wouldn't pick the Master Key are that you want to progress through the game in a way that I guess the developers quote-unquote intended, or because you chose the Thief class, which gets the Master Key as an initial equip. If you do pick the Thief class and you're looking for an alternative starting gift, my recommendation would be the Black Firebombs, as these can be used to more easily beat the very first boss. If you only take away one thing from this particular video, picking the Master Key as your starting gift is probably the best advice that I can give. So, unless you're playing a Thief, pick the Master Key because trust me, you won't regret it. Alright, so our third tip is going to be to play offline until you're ready for PvP. Now, this is probably a no-brainer for experienced players, but it's generally a good idea to play offline when first starting out, as you can avoid being invaded by other players. Now, don't worry, you're only going to be invaded while in human form, which is achieved by consuming humanity, and is represented by the number on the upper left corner of your screen. If you have at least one, you can regain your humanity at bonfires, which can make you vulnerable to being invaded, as well as gain the ability to summon various NPCs and other players for boss fights. To play offline, go to the main Dark Souls menu, and you should see an option that says Log Out. Simply select it, and voila, you won't be invaded by other players. Now, you will still be invaded by NPCs during certain scripted events, however, NPC invasions are generally a lot easier to deal with than other players. 
Plus, it's a good idea to be in human form, as this will allow you to occasionally summon other NPCs for boss fights, as well as kindle bonfires, which will allow you to have more Estus charges for your Estus flask. But if you're new and you want an easier time, ultimately, play offline until you're ready for PvP. Alright, so our next tip is going to be to routinely dump your souls. Now, one of the more frustrating things that can happen in Dark Souls is if you die with a bunch of souls on you, only to die again while trying to retrieve your lost souls. To prevent this, I recommend that you adopt the habit of always dumping excess souls whenever you have the opportunity whether that be at a bonfire by leveling up, or by purchasing various types of titanite shards or useful consumables like homeward bones, green blossoms, or purple moss at vendors, always try to put yourself in situations where you aren't curing too many souls at once. To go along with this, try to make a habit of conserving various items that give you souls, like the soul of a lost undead or soul of a nameless soldier, as these can always be consumed right before you intend to level up or purchase an item. If you consume these immediately, these are just more souls you can potentially lose if you do die, and trust me, you're gonna die. Ultimately though, adopting a practice of routinely dumping your souls will significantly reduce your stress level while traveling through various areas as you're going to be willing to take more risks as you have a lot less to lose. When you're more experienced, feel free to carry 100,000 souls on you at all times, but until then, play more conservatively and minimize the amount of liquid souls that you're carrying at any one time. Alright, so my next tip is going to be that mobility often trumps defense. Something you'll probably start to figure out pretty quickly is that armor in this game is kind of a placebo. Granted, some decent upgraded armor will certainly reduce the damage you take from various enemies and bosses, however it's usually never enough to justify wearing the heaviest armor in the game. After all, at a certain point, you are going to run out of Estus and other health restoration methods like miracles. This is why I recommend you practice the policy of not getting hit, or put more simply, learning how to properly block and dodge. While this is something that will take a lot of practice, as you will need to get good at reading enemies' attack patterns, the best way to often increase your mobility is to lower your equip load by wearing lighter armor. Generally, there are three types of rolls based on your equip load, which are fast, medium, and fat. And to achieve fat roll, I believe it's 50 to 100% of your equip load. Medium roll is 25 to 50% of your equip load, while fast roll is less than 25% of your total equip load. Obviously, fast roll is the best. However, if you can't achieve fast roll with your armor and weapons, always opt for medium roll over fat roll because fat roll kind of sucks. Ultimately, just remember that mobility can often trump defense as you're going to be a lot harder to kill if the enemies can't hit you. Alright, so our next tip is going to be to try to always fight battles one-on-one. -on -one. In Dark Souls, it's generally a good idea to always fight enemies one-on-one, -on -one, and while there will be certain scenarios that you'll encounter where this isn't possible, you'll find that you can make the entire game a lot easier by slowly progressing through levels, defeating one enemy and one boss at a time. Generally, a great strategy is to use a ranged weapon like a bow to aggro distance enemies, and then swap to your conventional weapon to finish them off. Alternatively, you could also use spells and other ranged attacks to pick enemies off from a distance as they're charging towards you. Ultimately, I think what you'll find is that if you try to rush things and fight multiple enemies at once, you're usually going to have a bad time. So it's generally a pretty good idea to take things slow, fight enemies one-on-one, -on -one, and progress through the game that way. Tip number seven, pick a weapon and stick with it. As a new player, it can be tempting to always use new weapons you find, however, it's generally a good idea to find a weapon that you really like and then stick with it for a few reasons. In general, the more comfortable you are with using a particular weapon, the more effective you're going to be at using it in combat, where if you change weapons, you might not end up anticipating how fast the weapon can attack, how much stamina the new weapon drains per swing, 
or even the new weapon's range. Additionally, the best way to deal more damage with any weapon is to upgrade it, and by upgrading a weapon, it encourages you to use the same weapon rather than always switching to the next best thing. Also, once you've upgraded weapons, you'll find that most scale with some of your stats. For example, maybe you have a sword that scales with dexterity, or a club that scales with strength. Specializing in strength weapons and then switching to dexterity weapons is generally a recipe for disaster. So again, finding a weapon that's compatible with your stats is also a really good idea. Now, all of this isn't to say that you shouldn't try out new weapons on your first playthrough. In fact, it's a good idea, as you can't really figure out what's good until you try it. However, just remember to stay focused and only really invest in weapons that you've found you're effective with and are compatible with your build. Next tip, avoid bumping your stats slash soul level. Maybe it's just me, but a common mistake that I made when I first picked up Dark Souls was that I would pump my souls into leveling up to be as strong as possible when entering fights. After becoming more experienced with the game, I found that this is kind of a bad strategy. While you can make some pretty quick gains between Soul Level 1 and Soul Level 40, and even some pretty moderate gains between Soul Level 41 and Level 70 or so, the cost to level up after that starts to get pretty steep. In fact, Level 71 and higher requires roughly 30,000 souls or more to level up and where you might be able to defeat a boss and then level up five or more times in the early game, in the late game, you may only get to level up once or twice upon defeating a boss. And this can be a real problem if you manage to screw up your stat point allocation, as it's going to be that much harder to correct it. To avoid pumping your stat slash slow level, only allocate your points in a way which allows you to use your weapons. After that, rely on upgrading your weapons to achieve damage boosts, and then, if you still find that you need more damage or you want more health or endurance, allocate points into the corresponding stats conservatively. This way, you can ensure that you don't overlevel. Now, while you are still prone to making mistakes on your first playthrough, knowing not to go too crazy with leveling up is generally a good practice. Our ninth tip is going to be to never put points into resistance. While we're on the subject of stats and leveling up, never put points into resistance as your stat points from leveling up this particular stat are better used elsewhere. Now, what this particular stat does is it boosts physical defense, fire defense, and poison resistance. However, I think you'll find that you'll get a better quote-unquote defense by simply having more health, which is achieved by pumping your vitality, or if you want better resistances, simply put points into endurance so you can wear heavier armors that just so happen to have better resistances. If you're looking for better poison and fire resistance in particular, simply wear armors with those attributes. And if you started as a pyromancer, the starting pyromancer set has good poison and fire resistance, so just equip that. Or if you don't have that particular set, look for it in the Blight Town Swamp, as you'll find it if you look around for it. Now, it's worth mentioning that it's not too much of a big deal if the starting class that you picked has high resistance already. So, if you did end up picking a Wanderer or the Pyromancer, it's not really a big deal. Just make sure that you don't allocate points here, as it is definitely a waste of points and an unnecessary increase to your soul level. Okay, so for our 10th and final tip, I'm going to recommend that you don't be afraid to use consumable items. While this last tip may sound a little silly at first, if you're like me, then you have a tendency to hoard consumable items when you play games. However, in Dark Souls, it's typically a good idea to at least read the item description for some of these, as a number of these can make your playthrough a heck of a lot easier. For example, Homeward Bones will allow you to travel to the last bonfire that you rested at, thus eliminating a lot of the annoying backtracking that you may have to do. Or, in the case of Green Blossom, you should get a boost to your stamina recovery, which is extremely useful for certain boss fights where you find that you just need more stamina. 
Or maybe if you're having trouble navigating some parts of the flooded city in New Londo, it would be wise to use a transient curse. So overall, using some of these consumables you can find across the game can make things easier, and it's definitely worth your time to at least look at the item descriptions and even experiment with some of these items to see if you could get any use out of them. There are some that you're going to want to avoid, like Divine Blessings, as there are a limited number of these, but for the most part, all of the other consumables are pretty much infinite. Alright guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like and also click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos. And as always, thank you all so much for supporting the channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.